this lesson, I'm going to be giving you a little help in following along with the chords of a song that you might find in standard sheet music or on a dedicated chord chart. And uh, to do this, I'm going to be going through how to uh, read a basic chord chart and also give you a rundown of the most common chord symbols that you're likely to come across. First of all, let's have a look at a few examples of some of the chord charts that we might see. This first example is what we call a lead sheet. Now this is a really popular type of sheet music and you'll find it in tons of commercial music books. All the real books and buskers books, they're all written like this and uh, we basically have a lead line written in the music which is going to uh, generally be the vocal melody and then we have the chords written above. You'll also often get the lyrics written below so that gives you a pretty good idea of how the song goes. We have the basic melody, the harmony and the words. There's no specific guitar parts or, you know, bass lines or brass parts, so we don't get any idea of the arrangement, you know, so you'll, uh, you'll have no idea about intros and endings. But we do have a good overall outline, so a pianist or a guitarist could play along with the chords, and the pianist could also put the melody in there, and uh, bass players can just follow along with the chords. So it's really a good all-round chart. Another type of really, really simple chord chart will be something like this. And this is something that you could obviously just scroll out with a pen in a hurry. And uh, unlike the previous example, we don't have any melody or standard written notation. It's just bar lines and chord symbols. And a variation on this would be where we have the stave and the bar lines, but again, no melody written out. And here we've got what we call slash notation. So each one of those little slashes on the stave, that refers to a beat. So we've got four beats in the bar, and you can see them there, uh, all outlined with those slashes. And uh, then you could just place the chords over whichever beat they're going to occur on. So, you know, if you've got a chord on beat one, you put it over the first beat. If, it's of, if you've got two chords in a bar, one on beat one and one on beat three, you can see with the slashes where they'd be occurring. So they're the main types of chord charts that we're likely to encounter. So the next thing to look at is what all of this means. Now for now, we're going to stick with the minimal cut down chart because if you can understand the basics of the chords and the bars, then you'll find it much easier to zone in on that information on the more complex charts. So here we have a simple chord chart. We've got bar lines and we've got chord symbols. We've also got a time signature at the start and uh, we can see there that that's regular 4-4 four, four time. So as a quick reference, just look at the top number for now and that tells us that we have four beats to each bar. So you can see there that the music is divided up into its bars with the bar lines and in each case we've got uh, a chord for two bars. So we're going to have a chord and then it's going to be played 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2. Three, four, and you can see there at the end we've got uh, two chords there for one bar. So each of those chord two, three, four, chord two, three, four. Okay, very simple. So uh, the style that we play in, the style of the chords, uh, the style of the bass line is dictated by the style of the tune, obviously. So. Uh, in this instance, you can see there at the top, there's an indication of swing. So this is basically a swing jazz style uh, kind of tune. So um, what we're going to do is listen through a backing track that plays those chords and just follow along. So we're not going to play anything just yet. I just want you to follow along, keep count and listen out for the chord changes so you can get used to how all this works. So um, here's the backing track and uh, I'll take you through it. Two, three. Four. C, two, four. One, two, three, four. E seven. One, two, A, four. A seven. D minor seven. One, two, three, four. E seven. Oh, one, two, three, four. A minor seven. One, two, three. D7, oh, one, two, three, four. D minor seven, G7, okay? So you should be able to follow along with that chord chart, just following the chords along with the bars as we go, okay? So now we need to have a look at the chord symbols themselves. Now every chord symbol is gonna be in two parts. We've got the note name, so C, D, E flat, A flat, whatever that is, and then the chord quality. So we have note name and chord quality. So if we have a look at that first chord there, C major seven. We've got the note name, which is C, and then we've got the major seven, which is the chord quality, okay? 
So the uh, the first note, the, the note name, that refers to the root note. So that's the note that the chord is built from, and it's the lowest note. And uh, that's important for us bass players uh, because that root note, that's our best friend. That's the note that we generally play. That's that's the one, at least the one that we will focus on. All the other notes in there, you know, we can put other things in, but the root note is important for us. So uh, we have to outline those the root movement. So that's the root note. Now the chord quality, that tells us what tells us what the other notes are in the chord. So in a C major seven, we've got C is the root note, the bottom note. Then the major seven, that tells us that the other notes are E, G, and B. Now you don't have to worry about those just yet. I'll get to those later in the course. But uh, that's basically what that is. So if we wanted to play some notes other than the root note, we could put in some of those chord tones if we knew what the notes of the chord were. But don't worry about that too much for now. So uh, yeah, so there's C major seven, we've got the note name, the root note, and the chord quality. So just from what we know already, we can start to build a bass line of some kind, just from those chord symbols, just from the root notes there. So all we'll do this time is we'll go back through, that, uh, through the backing track, and this time just play the root notes, okay? So that will give us a bass line. So if you ever see a chord chart, just look at those root notes, they're the notes to aim for. Don't worry too much about the chord qualities to begin with. The root notes, that would be fine. So, here we are, here's the backing track again, one bar in, and this time we're just gonna play a note on each bar. So, we've got two chords, um, sorry, we've got a, bar, a chord over two bars for each one of these. So just play, for that first chord, we've got C, play it on each bar. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, so let's work through the uh, backing track. Two, three, four. C. C. E. Two, three, four. E. Two, three, four. A. Two, three, four. A. Two, three, four. D. Two, three, four. D. Two, three, four. E. Two, three, four. E. A, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. Okay? So as I played through that chord progression, I used those notes in different registers because there's no indication of that in the chord chart. You can use whichever one you want. So I could use a C there. I could use a C up there. When I got to the E, I played that E there, and then I played the low E. I could play the A there, there. I could even play it there if I wanted. But, uh, you know, you want to make the thing work as a bass line, obviously, so you want some smooth movement. But, uh, yeah, you can just go for whichever one you want. So don't worry too much, oh, shall I go for that A, or shall I go for that A? You know, completely up to you. You're in command of creating this bass line. So those chords all had just very basic root notes. But another important thing to look out for is, uh, in terms of root notes, is the slash chords. Now, this is where we have two letters, the odd note names, divided by a slash marking. And uh, this indicates a certain chord with a different note in the bass. So the bass note is uh, to the bottom right of the slash. So a C major seven over E would be a C major seven chord over an E note in the bass. So as bass players, we play the E. Okay, so again, C major seven over E, E is the bass note, that's what we play. So let's have a quick look at a progression that uses these slash chords. So here we have a sequence of chords moving from C, then to D minor over C, and then G over C, so the C stays in the bass there as the chords change above. Then we have A minor, then A minor over G, so the the chord stays the same, but the bass line moves. Then we get down to G over F, then F, then F over G, okay? So there's a lot of slash chords in here. It's a, uh, it's a really good um, example of how they work uh, in application, and you'll be able to hear this as we play through them. So I'm gonna play the backing track, and I'm just gonna play the, uh, the bass line as it's specified there and uh, you'll hear how they sound, how you, it has this suspension sound and you know, uh, the, the movement in the bass, it can, uh, it can make a really, really nice sound. So here's the backing track. Two, three, four, C. D minor, 
minor over C, G over C, A minor, A minor over G, G over F, F over G. So that's a really good example of how slash chords can be used. As I mentioned before, the bass line is kind of performing a combination of uh, holding while the chords move and then moving while the chords hold, okay? So it's, it uh, adds a lot of, of uh, variety to what's actually a very, very simple chord progression. So this time, I'll play through that chord progression again, but this time as if there's no slash chords. So I'm just going to play the chords on the top, okay? So that would sound like this. Two. Three, four, C, D, G, A, A, G, F, G. the slash chords. Okay, so very different. So these slash chords are common in all kinds of music, from classical music right through to modern day metal, you know. And uh, you'll hear them a lot in bass lines from uh, people like Paul McCartney and the Beatles. You'll hear these bass lines moving and it doesn't, you, you can listen to it and think, oh, the bass line's just playing through a scale or something like that. And, um, you know, it creates much more interesting bass lines by actually using these inversions or these uh, slash chords. So the main thing to take from this is that as bass players, we play the lowest note in the chord. If it's not a slash chord, play the root note. If it's a slash chord, we play that bottom note there. Now, just out of interest, in that chord progression, you can see how the chords are divided up across the bar. Now, if you have two chords in a bar, there's usually you know, two beats for each, but not always. So look out for whether a chord only lasts for one beat or three beats. And you can usually tell by how close the other chords are to the, uh, to the chord before. So in the fourth bar of this progression, we can see that we have that G over F, then we have the F, then the F over G. So obviously there's three chords in there, <laughs> they can't last two beats each. So we've got G over F for one beat, F for one beat, and then the F over G, that's for two beats. Okay, and you can just see that because you know, there's more space after the F over G at the end. So that's the root notes and the slash chords. So now let's have a look at the chord qualities. Now, like I've said before, I'm not going to go right into the intricate details of chord construction, not just yet. Uh, I'll just run through some of the chord symbols that you're likely to see so you know what type of chord you're looking at, which is going to make it easier when it comes to searching around for the correct arpeggio as you start developing. So first of all, we have major chords. Major chords have no written quality, so we just have the letter. So if you see a C on its own, or a D, or an A flat, or whatever, it's a major chord, or a major triad. Now, there's three other types of triads, minor, augmented, and diminished. Minor chords have a lowercase m after the note name. Augmented chords are usually going to have an aug, A-U-G, after them and uh, diminished uh, triads are going to have a little lowercase dim, so D-I-M after them. So that's the four types of triad. We have major chords, minor chords, augmented and diminished. So we have no chord quality, so C. Then for a C minor we would have C, M, C augmented, we'd have C, A, U, G, C diminished, C dim. So that's the four main types of triad, but uh, we also have other ways of writing those chords depending on the type of music that you're reading. Uh, you might sometimes see the major chord written as maj, so M-A-J, or as maybe an uppercase M. And you might also see uh, the minor written as min, you know, so M-I-N. And uh, from time to time you'll see other sort of jazz shorthand things, uh, so you'll see these shapes. Now. Um, Major is often shown as a triangle, 
okay? So you'd see C triangle, and that would be C major. Uh, minor is often seen as a minus sign, okay? So for C minor, you would have C minus. For an augmented chord, you'll have a plus sign. So think augment to get larger, plus, you know, additive, <laughs> I suppose. So you would have C plus, so that would be C augmented. And then for a diminished, you would have a little circle, okay? So um, C diminished would be C little circle. So uh, they're the four types of shape that you get. So there's, like I said, there's several different ways of writing these chords. Uh, you just have to be prepared for all of them because you know, you can learn the basic standard way that all these chords are written, like C major 7, C dim 7 even, and things like that. But then all of a sudden you're reading through a chord chart and you start seeing these little shapes everywhere and think, ah, what's this? So uh, just be aware of it, that there's no definite way that all these things are written. You know, there's no laws governing all this or like governing bodies. It's just, you know, the, the standard ways that you see them uh, and there's other ways that different people write them. You know, it changes from person to person. Uh, but by and large, major, you're going to have, you know, as the alternatives, it's going to be maj or, uh, or triangle. Then for minor, it's going to be min or minus sign. Then augmented, it's going to be a plus. Diminished, it's going to be a circle. As well as the standard triads, we've also got a bunch of other chords, like the seventh chords, the extended chords, like the ninth, eleventh, thirteenth. There's added note chords, like the sixth, add nine, six nine. And uh, a lot of these chords are fairly self-explanatory once you've got the hang of looking at triads. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to run through them all anyway. But as I say, I'm not going into the intricacies of, uh, of chord construction. It's mainly for uh, communication purposes. So if you're looking at something and it's a C minor, you want to be able to say to someone, yes, this is a C minor. You know, it's, it's identification purposes to begin with. Once you know all these and you know that, oh, well, looking at that chord, it would be a D sus4 or a E7 or a, whatever the chord is, you can then use that because you can identify it and you can name it, you can go away, find out what it is. Or if you're in a band and somebody's saying, oh, okay, just start from the E7, let's say, communication, you can actually know where, what he's talking about. As I know that something like E7 is quite obvious, but you know, there's, there's other chords in there like the triangles and things like that. So it's just a way of getting these um, in your mind so that you can identify them. So for the seventh chords, we have eight common chords, and these are built from the four triads. Now, don't worry about what all that means for now, like I say. Uh, I'll just list them for you, um, and, then we can, and then we can go on from there. So we've got the major seven, the dominant seven, the minor seven, the minor major seven, the major seven sharp five, the dominant seven sharp five, or seven sharp five, the minor seven flat five, and the diminished seven. Now, I know that can sound a little bit daunting at the moment because you might not have gone through all the chord construction stuff, but um, you know, this is just to identify them, like I said, and if you really want to get into the chord construction of a lot of these more complex chords, then there's chord construction lessons at uh, talkingbass.net on the lesson map, so you can just work through those, uh, those lessons. So now let's just work through those seventh chords individually. So the first one, major seven, so I'll use C as the common root note through them. So if we had C major seven, um, you'll often see it written as like this, but uh, we can also see it written as, a, as a, just a uppercase M, so C, M, seven, or sometimes with the triangle. So as I mentioned before, in the major, uh, major triad, we had C triangle for the major, we have C triangle seven. So that's three different ways to write a C major 7, C maj 7, C uppercase M7, and C triangle 7. The dominant 7 is just a 7, so we have C7, and there aren't really any alternative ways of writing this. Uh, uh, but for now, don't worry about why it's called the dominant 7, just know that if I'm mentioning a G7 or a C7, it's also called a dominant 7. And uh, you tend not to use the word dominant when we're talking about a progression. It's more about when we're talking about that chord in detail. So if you're naming the chords of a progression, C major 7, A minor 7, D minor 7, G7, you don't generally say G dominant 7, you know, when you're referring to the chord. It's just when we're talking about the chord in more detail, you know, analysing it and talking about, oh, dominant 7 chords, you know, are made like this. You know, it's more in an analytical sense. The minor 7 chord is written as a lowercase m and a 7, so we have C, M, 7. 
and uh, you'll also see that written as C min 7, so this is very similar to the, well, exactly the same as the minor triad, so we'll also see it as a minus sign, so C minus sign 7. So you, you get the idea with this, whenever we see major in any of the chords, we can use a triangle. Whenever we see minor in those chords, we can use a minus sign. Uh, and the same applies to the augmented and diminished with the plus and uh, the circle. So, um, so that's the minor seven. Next, we would have the minor major seven. So with this, we would have a C, lowercase m, and then maj seven in brackets. Okay, that's the general way of writing this. Uh, but obviously with the shapes, we could have C minus sign and then triangle seven in brackets, okay? So, uh, so that's using both the uh, minus and the triangle there. The next two chords are pretty similar, so we've got major 7 sharp 5 and uh, the dominant 7 sharp 5. So the major 7 sharp 5 is usually going to be written maj 7 sharp 5, just like the major 7. Uh, but So obviously we could also write that as uh, um, triangle 7. And the sharp 5 is often written as a plus, because the sharp 5 refers to an augmented chord, okay? So I know I'm getting a, digressing a little bit with this, or getting a little bit more complicated, but don't worry about it. If you see triangle 7 sharp 5, it's a major 7 sharp 5. If you see triangle, uh, triangle 7 plus, that is also a major 7 sharp 5. So if you see a plus, it generally refers to a sharpened fifth in the chord, okay? So then if we move on to the dominant 7 sharp 5, you're generally going to see this as C7 sharp 5. You would also see it as C plus 7, because it's also referred to as an augmented 7 chord. So if you see C plus 7, that's an augmented 7 chord or a dominant 7 sharp 5. Now, I know obviously that this is all that this all might sound quite complicated at the moment but um, in the uh, in the workbook I've got a list of all these chords you know just the alternative names for them and stuff so you can use that as a little bit of a reference guide don't worry about you know remembering all this stuff to do with augmented and stuff like that for now it'll all come back, it'll all come uh, to you later on as you start to look at the uh, chord construction next up we have the minus 7 flat 5 now the minus 7 flat 5 that's written as it as it looks there, C, lowercase m, 7, flat 5, you know, basic uh, kind of chord symbol. But uh, obviously we can also use the minus sign for the minor, so we could see it as C, minus 7, flat 5. But uh, this particular chord is also referred to as a half diminished chord. So if you ever hear anybody mention a half diminished chord, it's a minus 7, flat 5. So um, when uh, we can also see this as a shape. Now, uh, if you think back to the diminished chord that we had with the little circle, well, a half diminished chord, or minus 7 flat 5, can also be written as a circle with a little diagonal line through it. So you'll see that occasionally. So if you ever see C or D or whatever, it's a little circle with a line through it, that's a, a half diminished or a minus 7, sorry, minus 7 flat 5. Finally, the diminished 7 chord, that can be written as C dim 7, or as a circle for the diminished and then 7. So C, circle, 7. Okay, so there's three different diminished type chords there. We've got the uh, diminished triad at the start, which was just the little circle. Then we had the uh, half diminished, which was the little circle with the line through it, or minus 7 flat 5. And then the diminished 7, which is the circle and 7. So there's three different ones. So it's just worth getting used to those. All of those seventh chords can be extended with ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths. And uh, those chords are written just the same as the sevenths, but the ninth, eleventh, or thirteenth generally replaces the seven. So you might see a major nine, maj nine, or a dominant eleven chord, or a minor thirteen. So, uh, you know, in identifying them, in talking about them, you simply just say them as you see them. Major nine, eleven you know, minor, minor 13, flat 5, you know, whatever it is, you can just read it as it says it on the page. As well as the seventh chords, we also have three main types of added note chord. We've got the six chord, the add nine, and the six nine. A six chord would look like this. So it's just a standard letter followed by a six. So this is a C6. An add nine chord is exactly the same. We just use add nine as the suffix. And a six nine chord, you know, same procedure, we've got C, 6, and a 9. But you'll sometimes see this as a 6 over a 9 or a 6 slash 9, okay? But either way, that's a 6, 9 chord. And uh, as well as the added note chords, the 6, the add 9, and the 6, 9, you also get minor added note chords. So you might have a minor 6, minor add 9, minor 6, 9. And like I've said before, 
Don't worry about the construction of them for now. We're just learning how to pronounce the actual chord symbols. So, you know, that's the four of them, or, no, well, sorry, the three of them, or the sixth of them, if you count the minors. Add nine chords, six chords, and six nine chords. One last chord that you're likely to see is the suspended chord. Now, this uses the chord quality of sus4. So you'd see something like a C sus4, and it's pronounced exactly as you see it. You'll also see a sus2 chord from time to time, but they're a little less common. 6-4 is the most common chord, and uh, it's worth knowing how to identify that symbol because it is very, very common. So that's the common set of chord symbols that, you'll, uh, that you're likely to encounter. And even though I don't go into the construction, you know, as I've mentioned before, it is important to understand the pronunciation of each of these chord symbols and uh, the different ways of writing the same chord. Now, I know it seems like a tall order, you know, just to watch a video like this and then just remember all these chords that I've mentioned. But uh, as you read more and more chord charts, you'll realize that you see the same chord qualities over and over again. And uh, if you download the lesson material for this course, you'll have a written reference guide as to which chord symbol alternatives can be used just in case that you don't uh, recognize one. So uh, just find as many chord charts and lead sheets as you can and try playing through those songs from the chart alone. Uh, it's really good practice and it helps with following through the bars and you'll grow accustomed to reading through music on the written page. Uh, you know, even though it's only chord symbols at the moment and, uh, you know, not the written notes, uh, I'll be introducing, you know, written standard notation later in the course, but this is a really good prep for it, you know, because you'll just get used to seeing each bar and working through it, listening to the, uh, listening to the original song.